So we um, also offer here a good approach for some prehab. Now, depending on you and your particular situation, your surgeon may say, I want you to go to physical therapy beforehand and have some one-on-one -on -one care, okay? If that's not the case, or regardless of that, we're also gonna have another video related to doing some pre-op exercise. Because even though we don't want you to take on a, a, a brand new exercise program right now before surgery, that would not be a good idea. There are some strengthening and stretching exercises that I can show you that I would normally do with you if you could come to class and um, that will help you with your surgery, okay? So, and it's free. So, whereas if you go to outpatient physical therapy, you're already using some of your rehab dollars, which you might like to have for afterwards. So if you can do the exercise class, that's a really good way to go. Now, then of course you're gonna stay with us in the hospital, two to three days, and then we'll help when you're here determine what the most appropriate thing for you afterwards is, whether that's home health, outpatient therapy, or staying on the swing program. So with the hip, there are a few special precautions which we'll be practicing with you at the, in the hospital. Basically, in a nutshell, you can't cross your legs, which most people tell me if they're having a hip. I haven't been able to do that in a long time, so no loss there. Um, you can't bend over and dress yourself or put your shoes and socks on and tie your shoes in a customary fashion. There's a 90 degree angle rule between the hip and the knee, and you, you shouldn't twist on it. For most people, if you've been good and haven't had difficulties in the first six weeks, some of that's gonna be relaxed at that point, but it's very individual. So your surgeon will let you know whether those become lifetime restrictions or whether those are restrictions that you can disregard after a short period of time. This slide just shows some of the different positions. We don't want you crossing your legs anywhere, like this person sitting here crossing at the ankles. You'll see the twisting. This one may be a little hard to see. But one of the things you'll find if you're having a hip is when you come up from surgery, you're gonna have a pillow in between your legs, and that's why. So we don't want you to inadvertently cross your legs. So why are those so important? Because the tissues that they go through and move aside for your surgery become weakened, and those are the very ones that hold you in position. So remember how we talked about the soft tissues at the hip really give the joint its integrity. Well, they're weakened. We need to give them some time to recondition and strengthen, and that's that six-week period of waiting, okay? Now, it is really important that you have another person to journey with you on this, okay? I can't tell you how important it is to have another person with some eyes on you. A lot of people come and they think, oh, I, I'm alone. It's okay, I got this. And it's like, well, there's some different things going on though. You're gonna have had some anesthetic, you're gonna be taking some medications, you're gonna have pain, you're not gonna be quite as mobile as you'd like to be. So having another set of eyes and ears and, and another brain that isn't on drugs, that, that's a good way to go for that first week. So really having somebody that's there and watching over you for the first week is important. Some people will do it with really good neighbors, but if at all possible, having somebody stay with you for the first week is really, really important. And you won't be driving, okay? Legally, you can't drive for six weeks after a joint replacement. That's the state law. Regardless of what, knee, what joint you had done or what side you had done, you're not supposed to be driving. So at the very least, you need a chauffeur. So why not get a cook too, okay? Also, if you have pets, I want you to think critically. Okay, is my pet gonna go crazy when I get home? Are they gonna ram into me? Those are the kind of things we want to avoid. So planning for all that, plus if you have pets that have food dishes on the floor and water or litter boxes to be changed, somebody else needs to be in charge of that. Of course, you'll go through the whole dental routine with your doctor or orthopedics anyway. All of those things need to be done just like cardiac clearances beforehand and you'll see more information about that in the book that you'll get from orthopedics. Okay, so there are some things that you need to do to prepare your home, okay? Um, 
planning just as you might have for any other surgery. Make things easy and accessible for yourself. Don't leave all your books upstairs in the computer room and have to run up and down the stairs repeatedly all day long. Put it in one, concert, in one area that's close, kind of making yourself a nest, okay? So um, oftentimes you'll have people who, who will ask you, how can I help? I know you're having the surgery. I'd like to help. Uh, transportation is always nice, shopping is nice, but also I'll tell people they never know what to do. So find out who knows how to cook and ask them to bring you meals. Don't ask for people to cook for you that aren't good cooks though, but you could of course put things in your freezer, but it's kind of fun to see what people will bring you sometimes. But set up an area for yourself, okay? Your place to recuperate with your, with your things there that you need and include your exercise instructions and little bit of gear that we'll give you to, to work on that. Okay, now for any of you who don't know, throw rugs are evil. Get them up and don't plan on putting them back, at least not for a long time. They tend to trip people up with a walker, without one, with a cane, they slip, not a good idea. Making sure that your pathways for your home are wide enough to accommodate your walker. So your walker is going to be most likely somewhere between 20 and 22 inches wide. So if you can measure, make sure you can get through your hallways, bathroom door, bedroom door, those are critical areas. I want you taking your walker with you initially. Uh, it recommends taping or down cords. Frankly, if you could reroute them, that would be much better. I don't like having people walking across things. And making sure that you have either a good pair of non-skid slippers or shoes. We're gonna give you some lovely Jefferson Issue non-skid socks. I don't think they're very comfortable, nor are they very fashionable. So, but something on your feet that's not gonna allow you to slip, okay? Now, the st firm straight back chair is most applicable to the hips. Because we have that precaution, we want to sit so that our hip is always higher than our knee. So checking for a chair that's on the higher side. Now for people having knees, that's also going to be your, your best choice, your most comfortable choice for getting off of. And the armrests are nice because you're going to be using those to get up. So one thing to practice at home is getting up and down from a chair using your arms and just your non-surgical side. So if I had my left side done, and this table is really high, but getting up from a chair, I'm gonna push with my arms and stand up just on my other leg. That keeps the stress off my surgical side. You'll be able to involve it fairly soon and we'll have you start doing that in the hospital. But that's a great way to check surface height to see how doable that is for you as well. Now, if you live in a two-level house and your bedrooms are upstairs, do you have an option to stay on the main floor? That is going to put less stress on you. Or if you, say, have all upstairs bath bathroom, or bedrooms and a powder room on the main floor, plan to come down and be on the main floor during the day and only go upstairs at night. But if you can possibly live on one floor for the first couple of weeks anyway, you'll be more comfortable. Do you have stairs? If you have stairs, do they have handrails? And are they good and solid? So therapist's dream is handrails, nightmare, no handrails and stairs. So make sure that those are set up for you. So in the bathroom, a few critical elements are, do you have a non-skid surface in your tub or shower? If you don't, please get a mat or apply some now, okay? Um, Occupational therapy is going to insist that you have a bench or shower chair. And we'll look at what those look like later because we're going to want you to get one. Um, a handheld shower head is also very useful. We'll also save some water and make sure that you actually get clean. Now, incidentally, you will not be taking a shower for the first week after you get home because of the dressing on your knee, but we'll talk about that again in a few minutes. Also super important to have grab bars to get in and out of showers and tubs. Uh, one inside, one outside is great. I happen to know they do make some really good suction cup ones now and they're not very expensive. I've purchased them myself at Walmart, but you can probably find them uh, other places closer to home. You don't want just the, the visible suction cups, but the whole piece that's a suction piece and then like has a handle that you crank down on. 
I've seen those for less than $20 at Walmart. Um, remember your towel racks, your decorative towel racks are not grab bars. Grabbing those can cause them to come off the wall and you to end up on the floor. Also practice getting on and off of your toilet. So if you have a low toilet, we'll talk later about getting a riser for that, particularly for the hips. But see that same one-legged technique, can you get it on and off of your toilet with the use of the vanity or whatever you have around? Okay. In the kitchen, hopefully you're not doing a lot of cooking. I like to tell my joint replacement people, you are excused from all KP duty for the first about four weeks, okay? I don't want you doing a lot of static standing. So you standing around like this, just in one place, is not moving those synovial fluids. Can also make you feel lightheaded, especially after surgery when you've lost a little blood. I really don't want you to be doing that. So somebody else, your, your caregiver, your journey mate, is who is gonna be in charge of that, okay? So, but do move things like your coffee and easily, you know, items that you might need frequently where you can reach them easily. So no high reaching cabinets, low reaching cabinets. You wanna avoid those things and put a stool in there so you could perch on it, talk to the person while they're fixing meals or sit there while you're heating something up. Okay, in the bedroom, one of the main things is the height of the bed. So particularly for hips, we can't go with a bed that's lower than that, the knee height. So really good choices on heights are things that hit you a couple of inches above the knee. So not only the bed, your chairs, car seats also, okay? So you're much better off traveling around in your soccer mom minivan height thing than the Lamborghini. You need to leave that one home. That's not gonna work for you, okay? So in this height range is the best height. So if you have options for what to go home in, pick the one that hits you here, okay? Monster truck, also not good. A little too high to get in and out of. But back to the bed, you want to have it be above the bend of your knee, if possible, okay? The other thing in the bedroom is, can you get your walker between the bed and the wall? Some people have a real narrow space there. I don't like to see people ditching the walker and like free handing on everything. That's a fall waiting to happen. All right, so you will also have a pre-op appointment with orthopedics. They'll go over all your medications, allergies, doctors, give you booklets, all kinds of things like that. Please be patient with us. We do ask you the same questions I realize a lot of times but we sure wouldn't want to miss anything like allergies. Now, now is a great time to remember to really use good nutrition when you're eating. It always is, but right now, we want your body to be as strong as possible. Follow any diet that the doctor gives you in the way of weight loss or protein intake, any of those kind of things. Just to bear in mind, a case in point with that, you may think, oh well, it's too late. I've got extra pounds on me. I'm not gonna worry about it. I'll live it up right now. For every extra pound of body weight you have, it's 20 more pounds of stress on your knee. So every pound does count. I don't want you dieting unless you've been put on a diet, but I want you to be mindful of that. But yeah, every pound does make a difference, okay? Now, please, of course, monitor your blood sugar if you're diabetic, but I also wanna raise everyone's attention to the fact that regardless of whether you're diabetic or not, you are going to have blood sugar checks after surgery. It is a normal stress reaction for the body to run a higher blood sugar after surgery for everyone, regardless of whether you're, you're diabetic or not. So before a meal, the nurses are gonna be checking your blood sugar. So don't get mad at them and think they made a mistake. It's actually what their, their protocol. Because if your blood sugars are running 180 or higher, they have to actually take action to help improve that because it has an impact on your healing, an adverse one if they're too high. So usually only goes on for 24 hours or so, but they are correct in doing that, okay? I'm sure you've all heard the drill. You know the drill with smoking and tobacco use. You will be advised to quit beforehand because that does also impact your healing wound healing in particular. Okay, so we're gonna talk about preparing your body now. We've come up to the night before surgery. What do we need to do, okay? So don't go crazy with shaving. You can shave your face. 
uh, but for the two days prior to surgery, no other shaving. They'll take care of what you need in the way of that. And the reason for that is we don't want any insults on the body. Any cuts, nicks, or blisters would eliminate you from being able to have surgery because of the potential for infection, okay? So the night before your surgery, you're gonna be given a bottle of cleanser. Uh, I'm not sure exactly what, I believe it's still called Hibiclens. Um, I'm not sure what color the bottle is now, but they're gonna give you a liquid disinfectant, essentially, to use in the shower the night before your surgery. So you're gonna take a shower, you're going to do your upper, your up neck and above with whatever you like, your shampoo, your conditioner, your body wash. You're gonna rinse that off, rinse your body, apply the Hippocleanse, step out of the shower spray for a full minute before you get back in and rinse the Hippocleanse off, okay? When you get out of the shower, you need to have clean underwear, clean PJs, clean sheets on your bed, everything clean, okay? Don't put any foo-foo stuff on, so no deodorant, powder, lotions, anything like that, okay? Your partner also has to take a shower that night, but they don't have to use your Hibiclens. They can use whatever they want, okay? And you can't have your pets sleep with you. It's really hard for Fido and Kitty sometimes. They don't understand because that's their bed too, but because of the risk of infection, they cannot be on the bed that night. So they'll have to understand as best they can. And then follow their instructions as far as not eating or drinking past midnight, depending on what they tell you, okay? Now, again, in the morning, you're gonna go through the same process with the Hibiclens. I know the previous slide, slide said don't shower in the morning. That's actually not true. You do want to shower the next morning. Do the same thing with the Hibiclens again, and then put on clean, nice, comfortable, loose-fitting clothes to come to the hospital. Don't pet the dog and the cat on the way out, and you're good to go. Now, you can also see here where it says no foo-foo, no creams, deodorants, powders, lotions, cologne, or perfume. And you went through the same process. It is fine to wash your face and brush your teeth with a small amount of water in the morning. And do not shave. Don't write smiley faces, anything like that. They'll take care of all that for you when you get here. So some things to bring with you. Some nice, flat, supportive shoes, preferably something that laces on and fits you a little bit on the looser side now because your feet are likely to be a little bit swollen after surgery. You can bring your own personal toiletries. We will have Jefferson issue of things. You might like your own better. We do have them, but if you, you feel more like you're at home if you have your own, your own brand. Please bring your glasses. Contacts are hard to get into eyes when you're on medication sometimes. Your dentures, of course. And more so than telephone numbers, probably your charging cords for your electronics. And we do have free Wi-Fi, so you'll probably want your phone and your tablet and all those kind of things. So things not to bring, because you can't bribe the physical therapist. You're gonna do PT regardless of what you, know, what you try to sell me. No large amounts of money, credit cards, jewelry, or valuables. Although homemade cookies have been known to work. Um, but those things would just get locked up. And you don't need money, because the food at the cafe is already brought to you as part of your package, okay? So.